Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay. So great. Once again, my name is Paulo Yewusi, and I'm the country manager for Nigeria. All right. So um, this particular um, meeting is organized by Talent Bureau Limited. Um, we have um, we have our branches in several parts of, of Africa, presently in Ghana, and I'm in Nigeria. And we are looking forward to expand our horizon to um, to Europe, and which we are working on currently. Um, so Talent Bureau Limited have um, we have services we render from training and consultation and consulting, we are um, recruiting, you know, payroll services and several dietary solutions. So Talent Bureau is just like a one-stop shop, you know, to help you with your HR solutions. So, but if that means that if you have any if any any challenge you're facing, you know, that needs an HR solution partner, Talent Bureau is the right and the best partner you can ever want to work with. So without wasting much of our time, I want to say welcome on board to this webinar. It's a two-day webinar, and you, you, I, I'm, I'm trying to assure you that you would enjoy your time here. You would enjoy your time here. All we needed to do is just come with your writing pen, your writing materials, and make sure you get as much as possible from the guest speakers, and you make sure you have your questions available. So if you have any questions you want to ask, please, Put it in the comment section. I will note the questions, then we we'll get to ask them um, if there if, if we have more time, because we have other questions we need to ask already. So if you have more time, then we'll go to those questions. So without wasting much of our time, I want to introduce to you my boss, the CEO and founder of Talent Bureau Limited, Mrs. Felicia Odumosu. She will be taking over from here. Welcome, ma. You're muted. Welcome everyone. I'm glad you were able to join us today. So um, from different locations of the world, we have people who have joined us from Nigeria, from Ghana, from the UK, from different parts of, of the world. So we're using, talking about using streamlined, integrated, automated tools that would help you add structure to your hiring process. This streamlined process will also help you make decisions faster, they would help you have efficient and cost-effective recruitment processes, and they will deliver high quality candidates to you and to your organization. So we have set up this webinar to help you address whatever challenges you have currently, or maybe the ones you have in future in your hiring process. So Wenda is here and she's available to share valuable information with you on how branding affects your hiring process. She'll be giving you tips on how you can streamline your recruitment process how you can change the way you recruit forever. So the key is changing the way you recruit forever so that you can make and achieve results. So um, please get all your questions ready. Feel free to have them in the chat box so that Wendy can address them once we're done. So let me quickly introduce Wendy. Wendy McDougall is the CEO and, Fire and the MD of Firefish Software. It's a customer relationship management and ATS, that's application tracking system, different software firm for recruiters. So she's focused on helping recruiters. And I got to meet her through one of the eBooks I read for, from her, which helped me transform the way I recruit, helped me transform the way I deal with customers, helped me transform the way I deal with candidates and things have not remained the same. And I thought it would be good for us to have her join us today to share the same tips with you. So Wendy loves helping recruiters reach engage and recruit top talent through technology. So she enjoys being a regular speaker at programs like this, events like this one, and it has enabled her to support numerous recruiters, attract the best talent, engage applicants productively, and increase their placement by 25% on a yearly basis. So she's helped recruiters like me who have increased our placement and productivity by 25% every year. So her specialties include online recruitment, software, um, social recruitment, recruitment software, recruitment process outsourcing, selecting information technology, contract hiring, permanent hiring, interim hiring, performance management, and SME growth, and ITC. So Wendy, without taking too much of our time, welcome and give us what you've got. Oh, thank you so much. That's a lovely introduction. And you probably can tell from my act 
accent. I'm from, I'm sitting in Scotland, so far away from all of you, um, but lovely um, to be part of this today. And yeah, as uh, Felicia just said there, I, I like, um, I'm a recruiter of past as well. So I've done what you're doing and now I've moved into the software business um, in terms of helping recruitment. So I'm here to help. And I've got some sort of presentations just to hopefully get you thinking about what you could be doing differently. Before that, I wanted to make it as interactive as possible. So I've got the chat up here. Can everybody just sort of let me know whether or not, if you can just do like either in-house or agency. Now our jargon is if you're recruiting for your own business, we call that in-house over in the UK. And if you're recruiting on behalf of organizations, then we call that an agency like staffing service. If, ever, if anybody is there, um, you can then just sort of pop in, it'll just give me an indication of what the split is. Um, so I know how to sort of communicate in terms of um, whether or not you're sales focused or you're you're just recruiting in house. So if you've got a chance, you know where the chat is, feel free just to pop that in as I'm going in. Thank you very much, IB and Nicola. OK, great agency, agency. I'll wait for anybody else, but just through the chat, you can let me know because I'm going to keep that sort of up and running so I can see that as well. All right. Perfect. I'm going to share my screen now and like as well in house. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and what we'll do here is I'm going to share just now, but I do want to sort of keep that um, chat going in terms of um, I've got it on my other screen here. Um, so hopefully, can you see um, I shared my, the correct screen? Can you share Can you see the, um, the uh, presentation if you give me a wee thumbs up? Can you see that? Can I get a thumbs up from people? Yeah, is that the right screen I'm showing? Can anybody tell me I'm showing I'm showing the right screen? Just to do yes, well. yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay, so um, I've been asked to then look at just demystifying the hiring process, and I'm hope I'm hopefully that this will add a little bit of value to your day to day. Um, so effectively, um, I, I kind of if I've got a wee bit of a mix of in house and agency, I've got a wee, few more agencies, so that's in, in my turf a little bit more. But I bet you, when you started and decided to be a recruitment company or a recruitment consultant, you kind of thought this is brilliant. You're going to be able to have nice morning cups of teas and coffees. You're going to meet lots of people, and you're going to make lots of money. Uh, most people I talk to, that's their aim for recruitment. But very quickly, what happens is that you end up feeling that this with lots and lots of tasks to try and do. And you're the last person that is leaving before the end of the night. And it's 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 almost like you're working really, really hard. And it feels like you're dragging yourself through mud sometimes with the recruitment sector. Um, and, and often what we find is that recruiters then just get into being busy and you end up in this wee hamster wheel that goes on and on and on. And sometimes when this happens, and in particular the global situation that we've had, the recruitment sector, um, certainly over in the UK, has gone mental. We've gone from almost the slow lane uh, just back in January to everybody's just jumped into the acceleration lane and everybody's hiring. What's more, there's a UK shortage of recruiters as well. So, you know, everyone's really looking to the sector to try and fix problems, which is great. But if you're not careful, you end up just doing the same tasks over and over and you don't achieve your end goals of actually making enough placements. And that one reason is really because the recruitment is almost like a bit of an iceberg. So when I got asked to sort of look at breaking down the recruitment um, process to see, like, I know that I got a lot of questions asked in terms of, and a lot of those questions were, how can I do it faster? How can I do, what's the secret of just trying to get more placements really, really quick? And, and unfortunately, the answer to that is actually what you do behind the, beneath the iceberg, the part at the top that may, some people can do this and make it look really easy and get to meet people and get to, you know, just um, have those cups of coffees and make lots of money or make lots of placements with it. But it's because they have done so much work, you know, underneath that iceberg. So I'm going to explore um, what you need to do in order to actually speed up the process, because a lot of people do come into this industry and they just see the surface of like getting CVs out taking on jobs and just then get into this hamster wheel and then they're wondering why they're working so hard and not getting the results. So if we look at the recruitment process underneath the iceberg and we break this down, um, 
the first thing actually is the brand that you're recruiting for. Okay, that has to be really strong. The research you do into every role. And then the profiling of the job. The advert distribution. Now, isn't it interesting? I've done three different steps here before talking about advertising. Most recruiters will jump straight to this step. Okay. Then you look at the candidate response and your selection process. Then we want to look at being proactive and we can start to actually build up talent pools so that we can be quicker next time based on all the work. And then we get to automate it, which is what we were talking about earlier and make sure that you're automating these manual tasks. So if we take each of these ones and we have a wee look in terms of um, what that means. What I've, I've, we've actually been doing a lot of recruiting for my own business, so it's been great because I've been back in the recruitment process hands on. And what we have found in terms of tech, now tech around all the world is really hard to find good technologists and good developers, so it's a global problem. Um, and in Scotland, you know, we, we, we don't have a huge amount of resource there. So you've got to be really resourceful to try and make sure that you can attract the best candidates. Now, one of the reasons why we have been able to do this and we've actually been um, able to recruit like developers in two weeks and get them turned around to offer where other companies are talking about having open roles for six to nine months in this particular skill set is that our brand is really strong, okay? So one of the things I'd like you to do is either look at how are you, if you're an agency, how are you promoting the company that you're recruiting or what does that company look like when they're recruiting? Have they got a strong brand? Pretend you're the candidate. Are they actually going to go and look and say, this is a fun place to work. This is a great place to develop. What's this company going to offer? Because if you've got nothing to back that up, it's going to be very hard to attract those good candidates. What we found is that I can go in and anybody that wants to have a look at our website, if you go to our news and go to our culture, anybody hitting this is going to look at this and go, oh, wow, it looks like they're having fun. And actually the feeling coming out of a pandemic right now, certainly in the UK, is that a lot of people are burnt out. They're looking for fun places to work. You know, They're looking for that extra as well as a good development job. So that ticks a lot of boxes. And when they're maybe sitting for a big corporate or a big bank, they're thinking that's pretty cool. I'd like to work there. So that's definitely the first step that you want to be looking at with your clients. Or in, if you're doing in-house, start looking at that piece of the website that you've got. What would a candidate think if they have then progressed on um, or they've hit your website and thought, right, what's it like to actually work with them? Now, the other thing is that I love this slide. I've used it a lot, is that I've also then looked at lots of different websites and they all are the same. You know, they all tell me I judge lots of recruitment websites. I judge lots of in-house um, recruitment websites as well. And, and they all just say, oh, here's our values. This is what we do. Make sure it's different. So the first step is to at least have something there. But then the next step is moving out. How are you going to stand out? If a candidate is deciding to look at you over somebody else for a job right now, how are they going to then actually connect with you, convert with you? How are you going to look different to the other person? OK, so that's really important. Make sure they can spot the difference. Number two, research. Again, a lot of recruiters don't do any of this. As soon as I've got a job on, what I would be doing is I'd be looking at all the different job portals around that you can get access to if you've got the internet there, um, and you just go and do searches. So you'd go and put the keywords that this um, job is looking for, and you'd start to look at who you're competing with, okay? Because if you know who you're competing against that's looking for the same job, you know, either they're going to have a better advert than you, so you want to make sure yours stands out. You can also benchmark the salary and you can see how long have they been recruiting for? Is this going to be a hard role to fill? You can find out so much more information online just by doing more research. And that then allows you from an in-house point of view, if that, for example, you've got a job and you suddenly go on do a search on one of the main job boards out there, if you have a situation where there's a hundred other companies looking for this one person, you need to be having a very strong conversation with your hiring manager to try and actually then work out how you're going to make this job different because it's too competitive to try and actually get that job placed. And the other thing from an agency 
point of view. I'm sure you've got the situation where you will have a job, but they're looking for a salary that is just ridiculous for the length of skills that you've been given to actually have a look at. So you can take a copy of all of these sort of jobs that are currently looking and then build your authority by going in. It's like building your case to go back and say, we need to rethink this. I'm going to waste and you're going to waste a lot of time on this job and we're not going to get anywhere. That is so important just now, okay, in order to be able to do that. And there's no excuse for it because it's all available online very, very quickly. I often say to the UK recruiters when I'm doing this with them, if you were going to go and put your house in the market or you were going to go and buy a house, you would do that research. So why are you not doing it with the jobs? Okay. Next up, the profile. So I wanted to give you an, 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 an like information or a, a, um, a sort of insight into what we see as a profile, because a lot of people just take either from an agency point of view, you'll just take an in-house sort of description on that job, or from an in-house perspective, you've probably got like five templates that you use, and maybe if you're you're asking yourself some good questions, when was the last time that those templates were actually like actually um, somebody on mute thanks um when was the last time that those templates were actually updated or spruced up because the candidates are looking for different things now that we've come out of the pandemic so we need to go back and revisit those Nicole are you okay just to put yourself in thanks <laughs> um so I wanted to let you see what we consider a profile and see how that compares to like your your own profiles there okay and um, they look good they're branded or i think they do anyway obviously i'm a wee bit biased it's like a, it's a sort of it's like a um um a, a, what's good about firefish what do you get we're selling all the benefits you can work from anywhere you can belong here this is how we deal with all the fun days here's our culture you will benefit from having a coach we will then here's all the sort of benefits that you will get with this job and then it goes into what's the overall of, of you know opportunity here what's this job summary like and then what are the main challenges that this job will have it's written for that candidate to learn what the expectations is going to have. In here, you will not see any list of skills that we are basically saying, please have these skills. OK, and that's very important because definitely from an in-house point of view, it's very easy when you're asked from a recruiter, tell me what you're looking for. And you can just say, oh, I want this skill, that skill, etc. Um, and from an agency's point of view, it's very easy just to take that, not question your client, your hiring manager, and then just go and post it. Again, just wasting a lot of time and not being smart. You will have so better qualified, qualified candidates applying for this. And also we use it to assess their motivation. If somebody applies to one of these jobs, we send them that profile and say, have a look at this. Let me know what you think. And if that candidate then is coming back to saying with really good positive stuff, then you know they're motivated. If they come back and very quickly go, yeah, it looks great. Well, they could have just applied for lots of different jobs and they're not taking yours seriously. So you need to then pick up on those motivations as well. Next up, number four, advert distribution. You know, there are so many free ways to make sure that that good profile and that good advert gets out there. Um, and you can do this without any budget. Really, you just have to have profiles on lots of different areas of where your candidate will be playing. So if you start to look at where this candidate is actually on, what LinkedIn or what Facebook groups, like, for example, teachers, they're great on Facebook and um, professional developers. They're not going to be on LinkedIn. They don't like LinkedIn, certainly again in the UK, but they're really good on like GitHub or tech sites because that's where they want to be. You know, there's a different profile for each candidate. Try and work out where all those candidates are. Ask your candidates. Your candidates are your best um, form of research. So if a candidate comes in that's good, ask them, where do, you, where do you have profiles? Where do you look for jobs? And make sure that you have a presence there, okay? And that gets everybody out. And when they click on it, you want to bring them back to your website so that they see that nice brand, they can download the profile and they can convert straight in, okay? Next up, so I'm just gonna show you a little bit about Firefish as well, because then what happens when they all come in, they all come into a centralized source. 
And effectively, you get a nice page here of being able to say, you know, where did they come from? So you're starting to track which source is actually giving you the results, because that's important going forward. And um, you can then very quickly use little flags of saying yes, no, maybe. Um, and it's also going to tell you, have you ever looked at this candidate before? Are they new or is an existing candidate coming back to revisit you? because that's also very important as well. And then from there, this is when some of the automation starts to come in. You know, you want to do this all by bulk. You could be having a whole heap of applications for a, for a particular role that actually has lots of candidates rather than maybe some of the devs. So you want to just select them all by bulk and then send them a nice email and say, thanks, but no thanks, or yes, I'd like to consider you, here's the profile. And all of that can be automated. Because remember your reputation builds on your brand you know every candidate in my view should get a touch point even if they're not suitable for that job you want to be able to say thank you but no thanks that doesn't take the recruiter any time if you're able to do it with like 400 cv you know 400 candidates at once it just takes two clicks but they've got a touch point there from you and they will then tell other people how good you are OK, because how many recruiters never get back? It's the one biggest complaint from candidates. So if you can be different to that and actually make sure you say thanks, but no thanks, then at least they'll know. And they'll also know that you're either a potential for them in the future or no, they won't come back because you said, no, I'm just you're not got the skill sets that we've ever looked for. OK. I wanted to also share some of the tar targets. I always find that some people sort of really like to get an indication to be able to benchmark them of sort of average stat uh, stats that they would be looking at. OK, so we've all known sort of the candidates considering to CV sent to interviews to placements on a monthly basis. OK, and that would be ideally what you'd be looking to try and achieve. But these are the new stats that really um, the agencies or the recruitment teams that are really getting to make their recruitment faster and make more placements are now focusing on the top level funnel side of the candidate attraction and re-engaging on new candidates and existing candidates. So I wanted to sort of give you some indication of what our clients on average are getting. So, you know, ultimately they're getting like 8,000 per month views on all their adverts. That's generating like 350 candidates straight into their talent pool. And that's also re-engaging because we send automated job alerts straight back to the candidates that are already relevant within their candidates generally 520 of those will come back and have a relook at any new jobs so that's giving you a monthly total of prospects of like 870 prospects all the time and from that you can then start to look at the ratios that you're looking for so effectively you're wanting to sort of keep 11 percent of those coming in from new candidates to re-engage candidates to the considering side down so you've got like 13 percent of them comes through which then comes into your ratios where ideally you should be looking at like one in every two from interviews then you've got one in every four to placements okay it used to be when i was recruiting that you would be looking at doing like three interviews and getting like three cvs well you'd be getting through three cvs forward two of those would be interviewed and then one placed from the stats now, it's looking like you need five CVs forward for every every job to then get three interviews to get the placements. Now, there's two reasons for that. One, I think clients are looking for more, more selection. They want to see that selection or hiring managers want to see that there's more than they're just the short list of three. But I also think the jobs, is, jobs that we're working are changing so much that the one job will never be perfect for everything. Everybody's gonna come at a slightly different angle and that's great. But what your job as a recruiter is to highlight the different opportunities for each of those candidates for that job. So then the, can, the client or the hiring manager can really make that decision as to which one they want. And they're not fixated on this perfect candidate because that I think from going forward for you today is start to never talk about there is a there is never a perfect candidate there is always a candidate that will have you know certain skill sets that will enhance that company certain skill sets that will enhance that job and it's how that hiring manager wants to use those skill sets okay and that's really important I think as well 
The next up then is looking at being proactive with everything. So looking at like talent pools, okay? So talent pools is not about um, today's recruitment. It's about getting ready. So it's more of that iceberg stuff and getting ready for tomorrow's recruitment. Because you'll start to understand and learn the areas that you're always looking for candidates. So you can actually set up key searches within your database that will tell you whenever a new candidate comes onto that database that they fit that criteria. So think how confident you would be if I was going into, for example, and I'm just going to use tech because that's obviously my background as well. But if I went into, you know, a company that um, was a hiring manager that was looking for a new developer um, and I knew how many candidates I had currently available and how many new candidates I had in the last week that I'd been able to attract. That's really powerful for you to be able to talk about the current supply and the demand. And those that have now started to move from a contingency basis to a retainer or a project base, which I'm really all for, again, you'll know the jobs to walk away from. And that is equally as important than the jobs that you take on because your time is very valuable. OK, and you can only work a number of jobs per week. So you want to make sure you're working on the right jobs. So if you take on a job that you have no supply of candidates, you're going to have to be working and spending lots of money on attracting those candidates. But if you have talent pools built up already with the right candidates, you know, you can go in really well with this and confidently with this and charge up front for your money because you're going to get it placed. You have the supply of candidates. So getting that sort of understanding of your data is really good and it provides so much confidence for a recruiter to be able to take on the right jobs. And so lastly, my favourite topic, really automating all of this process, because, you know, I, I think everybody underestimates the amount of jobs and tasks that us recruiters have to do. We are juggling so many different things all the time and so many different candidates um so and, and candidates and, and and calls and development and hiring managers it's, it's impossible to try and keep that all um you know going and all those balls going at some point something's going to drop and i think really from here is you know what i see is the big problem is that almost technology has overly complicated our world in the last sort of 10 years because we've now got lots of things with technology that they can do one for this one for sourcing one for job boards one for website one for email one for crm um, and all that happens if you have that all split up then you know, effectively, you end up getting CVs going everywhere and you're then creating more admin for yourself as well. So a lot of what I've been talking about can then actually sort of bring that all together and cut away any of the manual tasks that are just not worthwhile for you to play, place candidates. And it can consolidate all of those data, all of that data in together. So you're not feeling like you're on that what, hamster wheel, just trying to deal with candidates, just trying to say thanks, but no thanks, or just taking people from emails and trying to putting it into your CRM. And if your CRM right now is not then automatically rejecting people or is not automatically matching them to your jobs or creating your talent pools, you know, there is tech out there that can do an awful lot of this stuff for you. Okay. And lastly, I just want to, before we open up on any questions, um, I just want to remind ourselves that a lot of people think that they can get in here and do a great Sorry, Wendy, you're muted. I think some, the host muted me. <laughs> Cool. So lastly, <laughs> I was just going to say that, you know, just wanted to um, remind everyone that it is a marathon. There is no quick shortcut. So all the lovely questions that you were all posting about how I can do this quicker, you know, you have to do all the background work. And if you do all the background work, you will actually then start to, you know, create the job that you will love because it will start to feel like you to everybody. If the biggest compliment to a recruiter going, wow, you make recruitment look easy, but it's not that it's all the past work that you've put into it that makes that look easy. And you will start to have that time, the nice coffees, making lots of placements. And it is there. And I love this sector and I know you will, too. But you've got to get out of the hamster wheel of just doing everything behind the scenes. 
So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of how I would suggest that breaking down the hiring, the hiring process to these key elements will really help you speed up and make more placements. But I'm up for questions. I love questions. So please put anything onto the chat that you would like to, to, um, to uh, post. And I see my colleague there, Andrew, as well, has just given you some content there in terms of talent pools or anything else. There are ebooks as well. Please feel free to go onto our website and just download whatever you want. Don't worry, you, you won't get calls from us. It's more just there where we, we service like 15,000 UK recruiters on our content and they learn from us. Okay. Thank you so much, Wendy, for that informative session. We have questions that came in before the webinar, and we're waiting for the questions already coming in afterwards. We will begin to take the questions. Paul, are you ready? So there's one question here. Let me quickly read that before Paul comes up. How do you manage communications to persons who do not meet the requirements of the past and effective way? Yeah, and you know, it's a really good question, this one, because everybody almost like avoids it because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. The way I look at this is um, I actually believe that there's nobody that's right or wrong for, you know, a job. It's whether or not the job is right for them. So I turn it over to that job in terms of like, it's not a personal thing on the candidate side. It's actually how this job doesn't potentially fit what they're looking for. And the other thing that I also do that really speeds the process up is if I'm into, and, and it does take a bit of confidence, so I do appreciate that, um, and it takes a bit of practice, but if you can start to do this in terms of actually when you're in an interview, have a go at it because it will save you so much time. If you're interviewing somebody and they're not right for your job, get to the stage where at the end of the interview you're actually saying listen thank you so much you've been really relevant you know i've had some great information thank you for sharing all this i have a number of concerns i'm not sure that this job is going to be right for you or the job you know what you're looking for is right for the company and you just share it there and then and if you can then both have that conversation to actually both agree that yes, I understand that no, that's not what I'm looking for, because they've basically told you what they're looking for. So if you are able to say, well, it's not going to give you that, they won't feel that you're getting rejected. And you know, the tip of that one is you've just dealt with that rejection on an interview for five minutes it took you, rather than them waiting for two to three days, you having to go, oh, I've got to go and tell that candidate. It works up in your head that that's a big deal. You've got to go and reject somebody and you don't want to do it. And sometimes if you're honest with yourself, you may forget because you don't want to do it. And if you can, can you, you, if you can plan to do that on the call, you've just taken a week's work out of that task and you've just dealt with that candidate in a really professional way. So for me, my, my, my tips there, really honest and look at how the job doesn't meet the candidate and then um, and, and get to the candidate and you agreeing at the time. Thank you for me. Thank you so much, Wendy, for answering that question. And um, let me, I'll have to go through questions that came in before the webinar so that of those who are here can, you know, get value for, for joining us. Paul, do you want to take the questions or should I go ahead? All right. Okay, great. So um, thank you, Wendy, for that um, awesome session. Thank you so, so much. Guys, if you are really getting value, can you drop some fire in the chat box, please? Drop some fire in the chat box. Let me see, let's see if you are getting some value. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see some, some comments in the chat box, some fire, some emojis. Just drop something in the chat box if you are really getting value. All right, great, thank you, thank you. I can see thumbs up from Juliet. I can see fire, yes, fire, fire, fire in the chat box. Yes, Bukola, thank you so, so much. All right, that shows that we are following and we are really getting value. All right, thank so, you. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, great, great, great. Thank you, Femi. I acknowledge all of the comments. All right, so I move to the um, questions we have here. All right, so um, Wendy, one of the questions that came before the webinar is that um, what are the sustainable recruiting strategies? I think we really answer that. I want justice to that. So um, I will just move over to another question, which is um, what are the effective recruitment strategies? That's similar as well. All right, so I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe someone is just joining in. You, you want to do a summary, just a summary, just a touch up on it. 
do you want to share anything on that? Maybe in a, in a minute or two, just to give summary for what, what are those people who are just joining or something. So I think I, I think I just um, you said there. Sorry, could you re repeat the question? All right. So I have two questions here that look similar. One is what are the sustainable recruiting strategies, and one is the other is what are the effective recruitment strategies. So I said you you've done justice to it already. So I'll just maybe some are just joining in and you, you want to do some kind of recap to these questions again in a minute or two. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to the sustainable recruitment strategies. I think the big thing to think about right now is if anybody is still just doing contingency and picking job up for job up and trying to place them, stop that right now. If anybody is still working on a very generic basis so one minute they're doing a sales role and the next minute they're doing a project job or they're doing a driver's job stop that as well start to really understand where your passion is and be really um focused on a niche within the recruitment and then the business models that i think would be really really good in terms of um actually going forward is that get paid for what you do. Start respecting your own sort of credibility and value in the marketplace. So retainers and getting money up front to take on a job so you can do all of that time in terms of creating, creating the brand, creating the profile. If you're paid for that, you will then get a better relationship. And once the client has seen the value or once the hiring manager has seen you work like that, they will never go away and, and they'll come back to you for life. You become a partner, not an agency. So that's where I would say that you should be looking long term. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you very much for that response. Um, I would I would do one more question here. Um, the person is saying, how do I identify candidates and reduce turnover rate in the workplace? You know, how do I identify the right candidates and reduce turnover rate in the workplace? Yeah, a great question as well. And certainly right now, a lot of candidates are sort of jumping, not sure what they want because, you know, working environments have changed to being hybrid at home and at offices. So people are thinking that grass is greener. So retention is a big problem. Um, so I think um, retention should be easy if you do get the recruitment process correct. And um, the way that we look at that is that it's all about we're very values driven. So from that perspective, and I'm just going to stop sharing so I can see you all up here. Um, so we're very values driven. So that, you know, we have three values. We keep it really simple. Strive to be your best, be your customer and love the fish. So for me, when it comes to a final stage interview, I am not interviewing. They should, if they've got to me and my organization, they should be able to do that job. I'm interviewing on the fit for that candidate. So if you've got a hiring manager that then looks at it for whether or not they can do the job, you need to get somebody else that will assess the long-term fit for that candidate that will come in. And that's really challenging. I often like paint a worse picture of what it's like to work with our company so that I can really see if they're motivated to actually want to work for this company as well. So I think that that's very much sort of helping in terms of getting the right fit and hopefully your attention um, will then reduce because essentially if somebody really likes the job, the tasks, if they like their manager and they fit in that their values mirror the company's values, you should really have a happy chappy and, or a happy person and they should be getting an awful lot out of that role. Awesome, awesome. All right, um, Mr. Dumosu, do you want to take the question that just um, dropped in now? Yes, there's a question that says, what's the difference between recruitment process outsourcing and retention recruitment? Okay, cool. So retention recruitment is an interesting one. It might be a jargon thing, but I can certainly go through in terms of recruitment process outsourcing. So if you were a high, if you were an organization and you wanted to actually outsource your whole of your recruitment, you would look to an agency or a, or a supplier that would take all the recruitment. So they would take it from, they would develop the brand, they would handle all your vacancy, they would act as an in-house recruiter. So from an agency perspective what you would be looking for is to get a recruitment process or outsourcing project for a minimum of six months so that we call almost like a project but it would be you know most of the UK would be aiming for a three-year contract now the benefits of that is that then you're not just looking at every placement that you make you're actually then getting a commercial in terms of a monthly retained fee 
with maybe a bonus on success. So from your businesses, if you are there as an agency, um, it's brilliant because essentially then you're actually able to scale your business because you know how much money you've got in coming in month to month. Where unfortunately just now in contingency, you never know you're, you're working month to month. You never know where your next placement is going to come. And you have this choppy um, sort of business uh, that money coming in one month, money not, not coming in the next month. And from a hiring manager's point of view, your corporate, they're then able to um, maximize. They, they, it also suits them because they get continuation and service. They then feel very happy with the wider audience that an RPO agency can get other than an in-house recruiter because they have access to a wider market. Hopefully they should have. And likewise, they're not also getting billed one month for three hires, which is really high in terms of the amount for an agency fee. They're, and then one month, nothing. They're able to also look at budgeting for their recruitment with a monthly staggered fee. So it works for both parties and it's an excellent way to do that. Um, to give you an indication as to who you should be talking to, you should be looking at companies that are hiring at least 20 people more on a permanent basis. That would be a really good fit. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Um, I have another question here. Um, it says, um, how do I effectively carry out my recruitment faster while getting the best candidate. I think you've just, you've touched around it just now. You do um, a whole heap of work before you try and recruit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, so um, someone is saying that, what are the chances of, what are the changes? Okay, what are the changes in the hiring process? You know, things are changing right now. Like you said, hybrid and all of that, work from home. So the person is trying to ask, what can you just share a bit on it? And so, so maybe again, what are the changes that have that have occurred in the hiring process in the last um, couple of years? Yeah, definitely. I think that the candidate um, for the last ten years. I'm not sure if it's the same in your local markets as well, but certainly in the UK, the candidates are very much in control. You know, they are saying, you know, what have you got to offer me? And they're deciding. It's not just money. Um, so they're deciding they're, they're looking for development process, they're looking for de career development, but they're also looking for, you know, how is this company treated people through the pandemic? How is this company going to treat me in crisis as well? Because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of sort of, there's been so much un uncertainty that a lot of people's sort of psychological safety that sort of, um, if anybody's there that studied Maslow um, in terms of the nice hierarchical triangle of all the, the motivations, you know, this has been, we have been all knocked right down because we have been fearful for what's happening. It's the unknown with COVID. So that's come into the workplace. So we have to, as employers and as recruiters, really sort of build on that base again to make people feel comfortable and safe at work. Um, and if it's coming into a new job, that's what the candidate is looking for. So in terms of the actual hiring process, there's some practical things. You know, we're all on Zoom. So interviews now can happen on Zoom. Um, the compliance, you know, we're quite big in the compliance over in the UK as well. You know, it used to be that a, com a candidate had to meet somebody in person, had to check their visas, had to check their um, their ID. That can now all be, you know, that's all now can be stamped off online. So, you know, video integration and bring bringing that into the hiring process has definitely come into it. And then you've got a big opportunity as well in the hiring process because there, there will be a big need when somebody's getting onboarded, I think the huge opportunity for recruiters is to continue that onboarding process to support that partner client, because that is a that is a time that a lot of people will say, OK, well, they're sitting at home. You know, we don't have an induction process that covers every single hour because generally we were just used to them sitting beside you and soaking it all up around them. That doesn't happen now. So if you can think up of a further process of like a monthly support and check ins on a weekly basis and reporting back how are they getting on you know is it going well and also doing like almost um facilitating meetings with the the, the hiring managers as well you could be charging for that and that would be a great opportunity for you to to extend the hiring process from just recruitment but also going into that retention part as well i think that's going to be a great opportunity going forward so sorry paul before you go to the next question 
yeah, from no what point you just said, and based on the last question, most of the questions we got from the registrations were, how can I hire more effectively? How can I hire more efficiently? How can I recruit faster? One answer to this question is implementing or including video interviews. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we find ourselves working on two roles, three roles for a whole year, and we end up not filling those positions. So we have discovered that if a candidate may not be able to come to you for an interview physically or for you to send profiles to clients or for you to even see candidates as a hiring manager, you can ask for video interviews. Mm -hmm. Get them to send one minute video, three minute video. Tell me about yourself. Tell me why you're fit for this role. Let me know one or two things about you. That will help you shorten your recruitment process. So if you have 10 candidates to interview, 10 of them send you videos, shortlist to, to the best five, at the end of the day, you have two very good videos, invite those ones for interviews and you realize that your process is shorter. I just wanted to keep that in before we go ahead on things that have changed. I, I, think, I think that's a really, really good point there as well. And just to give you an indication as well, you know, we have hired in the last six months, 15 people and I haven't met any of them face to face. <laughs> So, you know, we're just starting to meet them all face to face. So how it's, it's hmm? sorry, in how many months? How long did that take you? In January, so in six months. Wow. Yeah, so over six months, it's staggered. We've been taking two or three people on, onboarding them all remotely. And it's only now that the UK is break, is, is actually um, um, allowing us coming out of lockdown to meet. So we're now meeting people that we have hired, you know, you know without actually meeting in person. And it's just about making sure that your hiring managers and your clients feel comfortable with that, but you could be making them feel comfortable with that process. And one of the biggest hurdles to that is ironically not the recruitment process, it's how they're going to maximize them when they come on and start working with them. And that's the opportunity I was talking about. Okay, okay, wow, great, thank you. So there's another question. It says, how does a new agency determine the monthly fee for retention equipment, is it by percentage or what, what do you want to tell us about that? So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can slice this one up. And I think if Andrew's still here, he would be able to put in uh, the business model link as well, because that's an ebook that has a little bit more information on that one. So hopefully he'll be able to post that. But um, so I can give you some examples, and it does have some more examples, but I can give you some examples of that. So, you know, I would pay like a monthly fee and then I would do a bonus of something that would be, you know, maybe uh, 1,000, you know, again, this is in our currency, 1,000, 2,000 pounds as a bonus rather than sort of like, you know, an 8K fee. But what I would work it out and how I would work out your commercials is you ask the client, okay, what are you looking for in terms of your recruitment? You then put in the sa approximate salaries and you would work out what your percentage of that normally would be in contingency. And then I would be coming in around 2% 2, 2 less than that, because then it makes it better for them to sort of think, oh, actually, this is a better service and it's cheaper than just going out to anybody at a higher contingency rate. And the way I said that is that I, if you're going to work contingency, I don't have a guarantee that I'm going to get paid. So it's a higher risk. So I'm going to charge you more. Whereas if you package it up that way in terms of your monthly fee, um, then you have a more of a guaranteed it's better for me and it's better for you. Um, so from point from that point of view, I would get away from the percentage basis, use it behind the scenes, but put it into fixed amount for the RPO or the retention programs um, rather than and keep your contingency a high percentage so that the client knows it's something that's different. Okay, thank you, Wendy. I have a very interesting question from an employer. She said, what is the best thing to look out for when hiring in a candidate? What should I look out for? Coachability. I, <laughs> I always look out for coachability. So I'm looking for somebody that is willing to learn and wants to learn um, because for me, you know, somebody that's really good at this at the skill set, that that's fine. You can teach that, but you can never teach the behaviors of somebody that wants to progress and wants to be coached. So how do you identify that in an interview? Someone you're only interviewing for probably one hour max. How do you identify those things? 
So a good thing is looking at traits that they've had in the past. So I would be thinking about, okay, um, you know, how do you keep up with what's happening in your industry? Or how do you teach your sim that? Or can you tell me a challenge you had in the past and how you learned from that? And it's, it's about learning and about, and then I would also look at questions around, um, okay, you know, give me an example of, the best manager you've had and how they brought the best out of you and what didn't work for you in the management as well. So as well as the coachability as the behavior, I'm also assessing how much self-awareness that candidate will have because a candidate that's very self-aware of their own skill sets and attributes is a candidate that then is open to coaching. If somebody has no awareness of how they come across, or no awareness of what their skills and their weaknesses are, they're, they're just going to be constantly sort of pushing against any sort of help in my experience. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank There's the, the ebook there in the chat. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing the ebook. So everyone there, some links that have been posted in the chat box, ebooks for you to read through. Because I remember at a point when I was struggling with recruitment, I, I attended one of your webinars and then you, you shared one. Um, there was an ebook about recruitment marketing, how to determine new products to offer your clients. And I was able to, you know, generalize. I was able to innovate and create more products for my clients. And this is how one of these, you know. Oh, I, that makes me feel so happy that it's been able to help you. And I, I we had a conversation yesterday and I was delighted because you said, you know, I do no, no longer... I work on a contingency basis. I know that my skill sets are, you know, are worth paying for. And anybody in this room that does not believe that, start believing that now because you all are very, very valuable to your customers and, and your hiring managers if you're in-house. And you need to make sure that if somebody's asking you to do it for a job, you're getting paid or you're getting the recognition in-house for doing that. Yes. So one of the things I learned from you was you need to place a value on yourself. There's nothing wrong in recruiting and getting paid afterward, but we want to be sure you are as 100% committed as we are. We are always 100% committed, but we want to be sure you're also 100% committed. So this goes for employers. You are hiring candidates. You want them to know that we're not just bringing you on board you know, to get from you. You're also going to get from us. So this webinar is for everyone, whether you're a hiring manager or whether you're an employer who is hiring you know, more employees every day. You need to understand the value you bring on board. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Wendy, for this. No, and thank you to that, Talent Bureau as well and your areas. wonderful company. Okay. Thank you. Someone is asking for the links to be reshared because they just joined. So Wendy, you want to help us inform your... Yeah, your I was people. just going to say whoever's asking for that one as well, if you use the scroll on the chat, you would be able to just scroll up and you'll see anything that A. Watson has posted you'll be able to then download on those as well. But feel free if you want to um, just go, actually, Andrew, are you able to just send the email to our blog? Uh, you, I think you've done that as well. Thank you, perfect. And if that last link, if you just sign up there, you'll be able to get all the eBooks and all our blogs and anything new that's coming out. We've got a really good one. I think this uh, a lot of the chat has been around talking about um, customer value as well. So you're able to, as a tool that you'll be able to download and actually value who is right to work with and who is not right to work with. And in the house, you could do it the same. You could have some fun here of which hiring managers are good to work with and which hiring managers are not so good to work with. Um, and so you can maybe think about a strategy then um, as to the ones that uh, you know are harder to work on. But that if you sign up for the blog, you'll get that automatically. Good, good, good. Thank you. Paul, over to you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you so, so much, Wendy, for this particular session. I'm sure we all have our notes filled, my notes, look at my notes, all filled up. And I want to say thank you so, so much for sharing so much value with us um, today. So the link is being shared again, and the link to follow Wendy on LinkedIn is also shared by uh, our team. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so, so much. All right. So. Um, a link will be shared with us shortly. Uh, it's a um, it's a feedback form. We want you to go through. Just save it, save the link, and fill it afterward. Just save the link somewhere and fill it afterward, so we can also get a feedback from you and see how we can also be better. Because that was one of that's one of the things that we do in recruitment as well. We also look out for feedback from our client as well when we are done with the whole process with them. 
okay, how can we do better for you? How can we be better at this particular thing for you? So we want to get your feedback as well from this particular training. Let's see how you have been helped, how you have been blessed by this training. So, and, and again, tomorrow is another session. Remember, it's, two, it's a two-day webinar. We have, this is day one. And if day one can be like this, come on. You should know how the second is going to look like. So Wendy has really impacted us today. She has shared so much. And I want us to, if you, for, I can see some people saying that, would we'll, we'll, we'll they get recording? All right, we'll get back to you on that. We'll get back to you on that. So thank you. Yeah, someone say thank you, Wendy. Thank you so, so much, guys. Thank you, Lua Pumilayo. Thank you so much. You can even drop, you can drop your thank you message in the chat box. If you want to say thank you to Wendy. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, thank you, so, you very so much, much, everybody. It's been a pleasure to be part yeah. of this. Wendy, is say, in Wendy. Yeah, Wendy say you can connect with her on LinkedIn. So feel free to connect with Wendy on LinkedIn. Ask her questions. Wendy has been um, phenomenal to my own business. You know, we've been going from strength to strength with new ideas, getting more clients, getting more candidates through her webinars and through her ebook. So feel free, feel free to reach out to Wendy. Wendy, thank you. Paul, please go on. I wanted to All right, Ma, I'm having a, a little share that link. Can you help me share that, that, that form now? Okay, I'll share it. No, it's not. On the chat box, not good. the feedback form, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. just share the link, the feedback. Oh, just share, just share the link. Yeah, I can see everybody say thank you, Wendy. That's that's so amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you so, so much. All right, uh, is the link shared now? Yes. It is. It's okay, on the chat great. Everyone, great, great. So guys, please, everyone, I want to beg you, just click on that link, save it somewhere so you can fill the form later on and we can get our feedback from you. So um, this is where we end, where, where we drop the content for day of, one. Paul, before we go ahead, and Wendy, you have like five minutes. Do you want to talk about Firefish software and how okay, you can great. help employers and candidates before we leave? Just yeah, I mean, if anybody's into, thank you. Um, but if anybody's into, uh, interested, um, you know, obviously take a wee look at our website. Um, we tend to bring the, it's really that recruitment CRM and that marketing piece together, which really then automates that whole process for you. And we can do that for in-house corporate teams as well as agencies. But I'll let you go and um, go and have a wee look in our website. And if you're interested, I'm sure one of my team would love to give you a swim around. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Watson, for sharing that. So www.firefishsoftware.com. You can get all the details there. All right, so um, like I said earlier, please get the link and send us your feedback. All of the links that I've been shared with you um, about Wendy's book and the, 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 the platform, please go and read up on that. Get so many things, get, get so much, and uh, you know, get help for your recruitment business. And, one thing about Talent Bureau is that we, we, once we get a value for our business, we don't just keep it. We want to see how we can also share with other recruitment agencies. So it's enough with, you know, it, we, we don't believe in competition. We believe in support. It's support over competition for us. So we like to provide support for other recruitment business. How can they, you know, the, like they would say, this, the sky is so wide for the bird to fly. So, you know, why take the whole space to yourself, you know? <laughs> so thank you, Wendy, once again. Thank you, Mr. Dumosu, for this great opportunity. And thank you, everyone, for joining in. We'll, come, we'll meet here tomorrow, same link, same time, 12 noon. I want you to come again with, your, with this great zeal. And please, if you have friends, colleagues who registered, but maybe forgot, although we'll send another email today, but maybe forgot, please remind them so they can join in tomorrow so they don't miss out. So thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, everyone. Thank bye you, bye. Wendy. That's a pleasure, bye. and have a great session tomorrow as well. Thank you. Bye.